Hi everybody, welcome back to another CYT Crypto. I don't even know if we're live or not. <clears throat> a lot of issues kind of going on. One wee second. Uh, just make sure everything is live just now. I've got a different camera angle. Change the kind of office about. So just bear with me a wee second everybody. And I'll get this sorted hopefully. See if we're live first of all. Right, there's a few people in. We are live. So that's all good. We've got a couple of people watching. Okay, I'm just going to jump straight over to the chat just now. Um, so welcome everybody. <clears throat> I lose my voice as well. Welcome everybody and we'll just get started just now. Just jump over to the chat area. <laughs> it's a nightmare just now. Okay, we have Gary Parmenter is in. Um, Keg is in. Keg, thank you very much for the donation mate. Really appreciate it. I've got James Oklahoma, one of our Brown admins, is in the house. Welcome to you. Cal45 is in. Stephen King, Mac Paul, Mervyn Skidmore, Andreas, Tim Gash, Marcus Jafari, High Points Drifter, uh, Stormkeeper, Debbie Clayden is in. A Dominique Deer, my chips bag is in. Um, Pascal Amsterdam, Richard Cooper, Tony P. Kukla is in. Good to see you here. Uh, IT Financial, Sean Dubs, Mitch Deiter, Benjamin Kane, Donny Don, Matthew. Welcome to everybody. Really appreciate you being here and really appreciate your patience as well. I know I'm about 10 minutes late. I do apologise for that. I'm just getting everything set up. I've just changed everything over um, and all the office is done apart from a couple of wee things. But we're more or less done. And you can see behind me, I've got the kind of floorboards kind of laid bare. You can just see in the corner there. Um, so all the office is done now. and just need to get back into routine again and then we can get started um, with business again. I feel I've not been doing business business for about three or four weeks. Speaking about that as well, I want to give a big shout out to that Martini guy. I don't know if you've seen his channel or not, but that Martini guy, he's given up his job today to go full time in crypto. So he's got his own business. And um, so big shout out to that Martini guy. I follow him and I do like his videos. Um, and I watched it, kind of this one this morning as well, talking about Digitex. And that's what I'm leading with as well, the Digitex kind of story um, as well. And then we'll ask a question after that. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be divided on this. Um, but uh, I'm just going to look at what I've kind of found as well. I've not found anything else out that that Martini guy, he's kind of got a video out on it. And I would highly recommend watching that. I'll put a link in the comment section as well. And I'm just going to see if... We are, right, it sounds okay. It sounds okay. And don't apologize for time, we're all happy you're live. Thanks very much, James. That's um, Crypto Knowledge Alliance um, for the five pound donation. Really, really appreciate that, mate. And um, we're getting together, there's a few of us getting together and we're gonna be looking at hidden gems and come up with the consensus of how to report about hidden gems and to minimize the risk of kind of finding a hidden gem and minimize the risk of it as well. So we do in-depth research on it. So we're getting together, we spoke about it yesterday, we got together, we just acted quickly. We've got the group together. I think we're waiting on DJ, is DJ in the group? I don't know, I have not checked it this morning. So yeah, that's that's gonna be good. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Rob UK is in the house this morning, uh, this morning as well. Another shout out to Rob UK. One of our brilliant admins, he's got his own channel called Bitcoin Phoenix. Um, if, you, if you're a Polish, Kind of subscriber watching this just now uh, if you want to kind of listen and polish to the news stories rob is one of the guys that provides the news stories for me as well which is brilliant some brilliant news stories same with the dev and james and they provide news stories as well and the group as well but bitcoin phoenix is his channel in, in polish so if you're from poland big hi to you and jump over to bitcoin phoenix and i'll put a link and um, down below i didn't do that yesterday i didn't put the links down below in the comments but i will do to um, today and um, to link to that so nice to see you rob um as well Goddy boy is in as well and um, who else aloysius be inspired and all bramble burt is in the house as well okay so we're going to look at bitcoin bubbles not bitcoin bubbles just um crypto bubbles so this is where we stand just now we're kind of in the green just now uh, it looks as if we're more green than definitely red um at the moment it wasn't like that um an hour ago but it's looking much better now, so we're starting to move up again. And um, Pi is up, or Project Pi is up 5.38%. Now I've seen a news story about that as well. Somebody tweeted about it. IOST, Mona, RDD is up. Never seen Redcoin for ages um, being up. 
XRP slightly up, Dash, Nulls, and the bigger ones, Waves, Myota, um, ABVC as well. Okay, so that's over the last hour. Over the last day, you can see it's a totally different story, um, mostly red. There's a few kind of greens there with Qubit, Ella, Eon. This is not all the cryptocurrencies. This is just a snapshot of some of them. So it's not all of them. And there's one that came up there that just dominated all the others for about 20 minutes or something. Uh, a company called Ugas. I was up there and I was going to lead with that because it was up 989% in one hour. And I thought there must be something wrong here. So I checked out Ugas as well. And I think it's on the new BGOGO exchange. And it said it was over 1.5 million volume, which I didn't quite trust, um, to be honest, but it went up 989%. I don't know where it is just now. Um, so we're going to lead with that, but I changed that about five minutes later because I thought it was going to go, something was up, yeah. Because it went up to $2.14 from 20 cents or something. You can see the big spike here. There's a spike there, so somebody bought it $2.13. It since went down 90%, but it was, yeah, it was at 20 cents before. So some poor soul has bought it for $2.13. So they've obviously missed out a couple of knots <laughs> on if they're paying by Bitcoin. But yeah, I didn't trust this. Well, I don't know if I trust it. So it's BGOGO, 1.6 or 1.1 million volume for BGOGO. And I think... Well, 602 million volume. Hmm. So I need to look at that again. <clears throat> need to look at that again, BGOGO. Um, it's one of the exchanges I was kind of looking at. BGG token. Uh, I think that's one that could be quite um, good. And it's only it's one-tenth of a cent just now, 28 Satoshi. So I'm looking at the BGOGO exchange just now. Um, so just to let you know, I've not bought into it yet, but I'm looking at it just now. So, yeah, that was Crypto Bubbles. That kind of is what led to that. And we'll go to Coin Market Cap, see what's happening. We're down just now, obviously. We were at 168 billion this morning, um, but we're back up to 169 billion market cap overall. Um, Bitcoin dominance kind of stayed the same, 54.8%. Who's the winners? Not that many. There's no none in double digits. Um, we've got about 12% in green, but just, just in green. Elastos doing well, 4.19%. Crypto.com, that's the MCO, 2.97. Bytum, Cubitica, Dai are in the just over the 1%. Um, we also have got Electronium, Ethereum Classic, um, Wax, Odom, Ethereum is up as well. Just, just up. So overall, market's down. Ravencoin down 13%. Made safe are Komodo, Icon, Digix, Dale, uh, or Digix Dow, Iota, Verge, Engine Coin, Loopring, all down um, as well. Which is not good. So the, the alts are taking a beating just now. A big, big beating. Just now we'll just look at what's happening on Binance. We've got one page in the green, just in the green, as we said. Um, BRD is doing excellent. Um, Bread, we've seen that before. It kind of jumped up. We reported that back in April as well. This is on the our little look on the daily. So this tends to kind of spike, come back down, spike back up. So this could be one of those spikes that's going to be seen. Uh, could it get to 8,700 again? It could well do if it keeps on going. And what what happens a lot is some uh, a lot of people jump on a project if there's nothing else happening in the market. So bread could be that project that everybody jumps on, it just spikes up and then comes back down again. So just be careful. It's up 15% already from 5,229 to 6,400. So just be careful if you've gone into it, unless you believe in it long term. That's a different story. Um, so there's not much else. Um, we're looking at Ambrosis. I think I called that a couple of weeks ago, actually, or last week. MCO is up as well. Really like MCO for the long term. Really like MCO um, for the long term. IOST is up. Gas Fun is back up. It's under 100 Satoshi now. In fact, how many are under 100 Satoshi? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 
12 coins under the 100 Satoshi. And that kind of gives an indicator of where the market stands. And um, when the markets, when they also run a run, you only get about two or three that are under 100 Satoshi. But we've got new players in the market now as well, so that might be different. So yeah, um, that's it just now for Binance. There's nothing much happening. Seller is down to 181. Cannot believe it. Seller Network. Um, not start this morning as well. It's just going down and down and down. I'm glad to go out. Just managed to get out. I lost another 50%. Um, as it turns out, I think I lost 10% at that. Does it represent a buying opportunity just now? Who knows? I thought it was a buying opportunity. 500, 365, 300. Um, but it's like catching a fall knife. So, But it's going to go up at some point, but you just don't want to call it. You just want to wait on the trade coming to you rather than you chasing the trade. Um, so Seller Network down to 22 million market cap. And it was, it was kind of way up to about 40-ish, not 38. Yeah, 39, nearly 40 million. So it's nearly lost half and it's only just come to the market as well. These are the times we're living in just now. Okay, we'll look at all of the markets just now. We've got 2,143 um, cryptocurrencies on coin market cap. Who is up over the last 24 hours? So we could look for possible hidden gems. We've got Ormius coin up 132% on 1.4 million volume. Haven't heard of it. Uh, Soma, we've looked at that, seen that before, jumping up 73% on 85,000 volume. Um, what else is good volume? We've got Themis, which is Get, up 30% on 277,000. Daruna, 32%. So there's not that many jumping big time. You usually get a low jumping over the 100%. But, so that kind of shows you the state of the market just now. Okay, I'll jump back to the chat. See who else is in. David Schwartz is in the house. Welcome to you, David. Good to see you here. Uh, Wing Demon is in. Sentai Kikoman. Um, Aloysius. Let's get them likes numbers up. I'll show Steve the love. Oh, thanks for that, James. Um, so he's just talking about the likes. How many likes have we got? Oh, I don't know. It doesn't show in there. About 50 people watching, which is good. Real chuff for that. Um, so... We'll look at Bitcoin first and then we'll go into Digitex and I shared my thoughts yesterday on Digitex and kind of what I thought about um, Adam. It's not Digitex, it's Adam I think um, we'll have to kind of talk about and yet we're going to be divided here and there's going to be some people pissed off and some others not so. But we'll look at Bitcoin first. Bitcoin where's the headed? It's just going sideways in the minute. You can see this is on the hourly chart. Just kind of up and down. It's just trading in a channel. Not really going anywhere between 5,000 and 5,220 or something. So not really going anywhere. We'll just look at it on the daily. Still looks good on the daily. When you look at it from that point of view, the 70 EMA has crossed over the 50 EMA. Oh no, that's uh, the 50 and the 200. Um, and just see where it is. We don't usually look at the 50 and the 200. Just for the golden cross. We're looking at it. So yeah, we're still way above the 70 EMA crossing over the 50 EMA, that's a shorter time frame than the 50 and the 200 for the EMA. It's still a good indicator because a lot of traders use it for the 50 and the 200 EMA. So that golden cross still stands, obviously. Uh, it's still moving up as well, which is quite good. So this doesn't look that bad. When you look at the charts from this point of view, you just see a, a correction here. And it looks like a little blip before it moves back up or before it kind of takes a, a downturn um, again. But... It's not looking bad. It's not looking that bad at all for Bitcoin. I think it's just taking a little break. It went up to 5,600. Taking a break, just breathing, and then just possibly shooting back up. But we just don't know because it is heavy man manipulated. We know that. There's, there's no question that Bitcoin is manipulated. Um, so they can do it on a whim. They could drop in a whim. They could push it uh, the price higher on a whim. And these people have got thousands and thousands tens of thousands of Bitcoin because they've had it since the beginning, um, a lot of them. So Bitcoin, I, I don't know if you can do, uh, but as far as we can tell, Bitcoin doesn't look that bad on uh, according to the charts. So I'm not too worried just now. 
if it got below the 5,000 mark, then I'd start to kind of think, I'm like, okay, is 4,800 going to hold? Is it going to bounce off the 50 EMA at 4,800? If it didn't, then obviously you'd be concerned and looking at your next play. And the next play after that, if it does go down, would be to accumulate. Uh, for me, it's accumulating um, Cardano and XRP. So I'll just take that opportunity. I wouldn't be trading that much, um, but I'll just be accumulating the tokens that I like. And uh, for me, it's Cardano, XRP just now, and just accumulate those. Um, I've got the other smaller caps as well that we look at, the likes of Howdo as well. Blockport, I might kind of think about adding them as well. But at the moment, you can still trade. There's a couple of opportunities, but not that much. So I won't be doing a call of the day today because it's just to the alts are just getting hammered just now. Um, and I've never seen a really good one that would say you, you have to make a call of the day. Bread might be good, um, but I wouldn't kind of necessarily jump into it, but it could skyrocket, it could go up another 10, 20, 30% because there's nothing, there's no other action happening. So people might jump on that and then it might come back down. It probably will come right back down again. So you have to be careful for that. So that's Bitcoin. Um, let's see who else is in. Crypto Cat is in the house. Crypto Dread is in as well. Good to see Nicky Shell Sheldrake is in. Um, CYT Steve, CGDX, 420 and Jimbo, the Gem Hunters, the LOL. Yes, so we've got a little group um, looking for gems. And, well, we don't know how we're going to do it yet. We'll need to discuss it, so I don't want to say too much. We don't know how it's going to play out, if we're going to give it away for free. Not, not that we're going to charge for it, but obviously we want to kind of help as many people as possible. But we've each got our kind of respective channels and kind of groups and stuff like that as well. Um, not all of us, but we're in... We're, I'd say we're kind of influ micro-influencers, is what you would say. Micro-influencers are kind of like that. Um, so yeah, yeah, we're going to do that and we'll see how it plays out, but we will let you know obviously as well. Uh, Nicky Sheldrake, is Hot still looking to break out soon? We'll look at that after. Aloysius, yeah, we need a gem like um, Thorcoin. Come on, guys, uh, that says Aloysius. Axel, morning, Steve, morning all. Good to see you here. Okay. I'm going to go to the main story just now. This is um, supposedly, allegedly, from Spotware Systems. Now, and this is the first kind of question here. Is this genuine? This Medium account has just been set up. If you look at Spotware Systems, Spotware is a company that did check what Adam Todd was talking about yesterday in his video, and he slated them, um, uh, but they've come back. And they've set up a Medium account. I believe they've just set this up to respond specifically to Adam Todd and his allegations about Spotware as well. So that's, but a lot of people are calling it bullshit. They're just saying this is not genuine because it's just been set up. I think it's just been set up to respond to this. And this Medium is a platform that um, the crypto users are in, uh, in that space. So I do believe it. I do think this is genuine. So this is what um, they've come back with. I'm not going to kind of look at it all. I've just highlighted a few um, kind of areas. So we are Spotware System, a 10-year-old software development company. They just kind of go on to talk about who they are. And they have a huge amount of respect in the online trading industry. And they've, they've, built, they've built out loads of platforms um, as well. None that I've used. Um, but that Martini guy, he was talking about it. Um, he said he's used a couple for FX trading. So our products have stood the test of time. We provide trading platforms to dozens of largest brokers in the world. Blah, blah, blah. So just telling a bit about who they are. And this is this goes on. I'll share the link for you. It goes on how the Digi Digitex project started. And basically what they said is was that Adam came back or came to them in January and said, listen, I'm in a tight spot. Uh, you really need to help me out. Please help me out with this. I need to get something to show the token holders um, because we cannot build out the exchange because they had their own developers in Ireland uh, and they couldn't build out the exchange. This is what they're saying. And um, so they didn't, they weren't going to take on as a full project. So they didn't certainly didn't expect to get it up and running within three months, but they, they wanted an MVP, which is a, a minimum viable product out in three months. That's what Adam was looking for. But um, he's never been straight with them. He's never kind of um, been in constant communication with them. So they've kind of asked the question, is it possible to build a futures exchange platform in two months? It is not possible. Spotware offers two out-of-the-box products, C-Trader, a CFD trading mar a margin trading platform, and C-Exchange. Um, both are proven mature products with millions of traders and with an impeccable reputation. 
So that's kind of white listed. If you want to set up your own company, you could buy it from them, which is out of the shelf and white list it, which means you put your name on it and they don't have their, their name on it. Um, so they've got the, those product, but Digitex weren't going for that because it didn't obviously suit them. None of them are made for a crypto futures exchange, futures being an entirely different asset class altogether. So there's nothing there that would have suited um, Digitex. Um, did Spotbear plan to officially announce its participating in Digi Digitex? We did not. As part of the agreement, we included confidentiality terms to make sure that Digitex can't use Spotbear's name for obvious reasons because we were just building a minimal viable product. We were afraid they would use it for token price speculation. We really did not want to be involved in the token business. So they were keeping the name out of it. They were going to be in the background working on this platform, but they didn't want their name to be associated with it at the moment. Um, where did the Digitex project go, go wrong? Well, it says after we built and delivered everything in the initial scope, which was signed off by Mr. Todd himself, very close to the MVP beta release, he came up with a number of new requirements. And it goes on to say it took days, weeks, or just didn't bother at all to respond to very simple questions. Three weeks before the beta MVP, he pushed us for new things and turned up the heat. As you would do with a child, we had to tell him no. We explained that it was for his own good. We were at the final stage where we would um, should only be fixing bugs and performance testing. We told him all new requests must go to the next iteration. And our last contact with Adam Todd was on 15th of April. He didn't even follow up with our, on our suggestions on how to resolve his issues. This looks like the point where he started planning his smear campaign. This was two weeks before the release date and we could tell he had no interest in meeting it. Um, so this is their thoughts. And I'm going through this um, quickly, obviously, for obvious reasons. Thoughts on Adam Todd's very own post. The NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement between the parties, clearly states that he cannot use our brand in his marketing activities. There have been a series of posts from Mr. Todd praising the platform we were delivering to him. Even though he was all positive about the product, we requested him not to mention our brand names. So it wasn't just because he was slating them. He told They told him not to mention the names, even in positive reviews as well. Um, which parts of the video stand out? They've got here, Adam Todd is a very good manipulator. And this is a necessary trait of a successful con man. So they call him a con man um, as well in here. And they've got lots of kind of, they're responding back to every part of this video as well. I'm not going to read out, out like that, but they said, what was it like working with them? Challenging. He could never articulate requirements. His managerial skills are maxed out to pointing at stuff, threatening and swearing. Adam Todd is a salesman, but that's where his aptitude for business stops. He did not show any capacity for understanding financial markets, mathematics, or software de development processes. Now, this is another reason why I believe this is not a fake, because I've gone so in-depth on this. I don't think that anybody else would do this off their own back, just because I've gone so in-depth on it. Um, and it says, does Spotware have anything to say to people who bought Digitex? Basically, the film, the film sorry for Digitex kind of holders. Next steps, they're going to seek justice. So I don't know what they're going to do, but they're going to take it down a legal route as well. So it doesn't look good for Adam, um, for Adam Todd. I think the idea that they had, a great idea. Um, I don't know how they could have um, kind of done it, implemented it, and used the Digitex token, but a lot of people did well out of it. Um, I did well out of it. It kind of took money and ran a couple of months ago, to be honest, when I seen Adam on video and uh, kind of spider senses spiked up straight away and I've seen what I kind of see is narcissistic tendencies um, and that is not a good sign for me um, it happened with Michael Stelaire in Titanium as well exactly the same thing and um, very aggressive passive aggressive and a lot of times very aggressive as well he puts people down uh, this is Michael Stelaire and um, from Titanium he was putting people down putting big company names down and that just um, kind of alerted me. I thought it was confidence in the very beginning. Then I thought, no, this is this is something different. This is something uh, not quite right. Exactly the same with Adam Todd. And I've not really voiced that before, but that's why I got out as well a couple of months ago. And I told you I got out as well and why, why I was getting out of Digitex um, as well a few months ago. Uh, it doesn't make for a good CEO. Those kind of traits are not good traits for a CEO. When you're in it from an ego point of view, which I believe Adam Todd was totally in it from an ego point of view. He was too busy being in the spotlight um, to deal with the actual kind of business side of things. 
and that's not a good thing for me. And I know I'm going to get slated for this, but I have to be honest and kind of tell you what I think. Um, but it's good from the point of view that it just makes me kind of look for those traits in leaders and other leaders as well. When I see that, it's, it's just a no-go. Craig Wright, Craig Wright, another example, Calvin Ayer. Just when you see those traits, just stay well, well clear um, from the project, if they're leading the project, if the CEO, um, because it's dangerous, it's really, really dangerous. That's my opinion. I'm not saying that is Adam Todd who he is. I'm making uh, judgments based on what I've seen, uh, and I could be totally wrong. So, Adam, if you're watching, probably not. Um, you, I do apologise if I'm wrong, but this is the feeling I get. That's the feeling I've got. Um, so that's why I'm out of Digitex and I won't be going back in um, as well. Um, so if it turns around, brilliant. If it doesn't, it's obviously up to yourself what you do with them, um, Digitex. And I know there's a lot of supporters there. So there's a lot of people not going to be happy with me. But I uh, just have to be honest. Um, CryptoCat, we warning me. Jet Notes is a scam company. Took me for 1030 Oh, we need to check that out. Rob Fidler is in. Um, Shark Duck is in the house. Uh, Ajmal Sareem is in the house. Benton Taylor. Uh, how's hot looking? We'll look at some of them. Rob UK, thanks, Steve. Can you put your volume up a bit? Right. There's a the volume up. Right, one wee second. I'm going to see if I can change the volume on this. Right. I don't know if the, um, the volume is looking good or it's looking better or sounding better, not looking better. Let me know if the volume's better on that. Uh, and Jambi K is in the house as well. So just let me know if the volume is any better on that. Perfect volume. Okay, I just had to change the mixer there. Uh, so I've got a kind of mixer board set up. Ah, my ears. Uh, Steve, can please take a look at eggs again? Yep. Have to see you later, love you. Right, okay, so let me know what you think about Digitex. I know there's a lot of supporters in it. I know I'm not going to be um, one of your kind of favourites because I've spoke about that. Um, but so it's going to be, opinions are going to be divided on this, I would imagine. Okay, so take a look at some of the news as well. Obviously, that was the kind of leading story. Volume is fine now, okay, just a little echo or um, echo or empty room sound. Yeah, so we've got, because I've got the floorboards now, uh, it does sound really echoey because the carpet's not there for soundproofing. So uh, we're going to get that. I uh, just don't know if I can change the mic, but hopefully you can still hear okay. So that was the lead story for Digitex, and it's kind of got it off my shoulders while I was thinking as well. Um, and I've told you that kind of in dribs and drabs what I kind of thought as well, but I didn't want to. And I was one of the ones that kind of got duped because I thought at the very beginning, I thought this could be really good as well for Digitex. I think this could be an amazing company um, and it kind of price shot up. We were all happy. And then you start getting kind of red flags. I just wish I got the bloody red flags beforehand. Um, you know, before I actually get into companies, I start getting the red flags after I get into them thinking, this is brilliant. Titanium, for example, this is going to be amazing. Um, but thankfully, I kind of got out in both of those. And same with Bab as well. Uh, but Bab was a different story altogether. I just think that was another story uh, altogether. It wasn't a, it wasn't an ego thing. It wasn't a, a CEO thing. Or oh, kind of was. But anyway, that's another story. So it's a shame for all the Digitex holders. But hopefully they can pull it back. Hopefully they can pull it back. Fingers crossed. Okay, um, Satoshi Nakamoto is mining cryptocurrency again. Bitcoin Cash attack imminent? Uh, question mark. So for the past week, an unknown miner gone by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto has been mining cryptocurrency again, and it's not Bitcoin. In fact, this Satoshi is currently in control of close to 40% of Bitcoin Cash. Um, hash rate as per data from CoinDance. That percentage is up from this time last week when the same miner had roughly 35% of the hash rate. Uh, some have speculated this is the beginning of the second chapter of the hash wars. A 
conflict that began last year um, during the Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SB hard fork. This theory suggests that Satoshi Nakamoto, currently mining BCH, is in fact Bitcoin SV cheerleader and prominent big Toshi Craig S. Wright. So this is talking about um, obviously Bitcoin Cash and they're thinking it possibly could be up um, coming up for a 51% attack. So we've seen the hash wars, what happened with that as well. Uh, it looks like we might have a, a second round of the hash wars coming up as well. So I need to kind of look out for that and look out for the news stories on that as well. Elon Musk flirts with Ethereum um, as tech giant's crypto tweet goes viral. A one-word tweet from Tesla CEO Elon Musk shows the power of social media. This is what we have to. This is why all projects should be on social media, not because of this, but it shows you the power of social media. Um, shortly after Musk tweeted the word Ethereum, the world's second-largest cryptocurrency, Google Trends revealed a spike in Ethereum searches. So that's all he's done. He's just posted the word Ethereum, and that was it. Nothing else. He's just typed Ethereum. Uh, so we don't know what he's doing there, obviously. Nobody knows what he's doing. Um, and Anthony Pompliano has got, Elon, you might, uh, you want to come on podcast to talk about why you're so excited about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and crypto. I know you're bit busy building two of the most important companies in the world, so I'll fly, you, uh, I'll fly to you to get it done. Uh, I think that's quite wise of Anthony Pompliano as well. So, yeah. So that's the power of social media. So I wanted to show you for that reason as well. So he's just kind of flirting with Ethereum. Uh, I don't know why he's kind of said that. I don't know if he's actually came back um, and responded to that. Um, Vitalik saying you should come to DevCon in October. Justin Sun <laughs> just got bit on. Justin Sun is another one. Ego marketing, stay. Uh, anyway. So that was the Elon Musk. Uh, a lot of people are, all oh, right, we've got here. He quickly followed up with a tweet with two letters, JK. Ethereum's price was no joke. Um, shortly after the tweet, the price started to move. So it jumped up at 0.68%. It climbed to $158, erasing some of the day's losses before dipping back down to 157 at the time of writing. Justin Sun, CEO of Tron, and Ethereum competitor chimed in with his own tweet. You've seen that. So I thought that was quite, but it was to show you the power of social media as well. That's why all projects should have a social media presence on Twitter, on Facebook, on kind of YouTube. Everybody, all projects should have a, a social media presence. Uh, Telegram as well, obviously, uh, everybody in um, crypto is using Telegram or Slack or whatever, but Telegram is the most used one, I would imagine. Um, is Binance, oh, that was the other thing. That was the other thing I wanted to talk about, talking about Digitex as well. And just asking the question, should we stay loyal to a project? Uh, looking at it from a psychological point of view, if we look at it from that point of view, we tend to stay loyal to product, and I've done the same as well, and I wish to God I hadn't. Um, I stayed loyal to kind of Bab. I was a loyal supporter of Bab because I believed in what they were doing. I believed in their ethos. I believed in everything they were kind of trying to achieve. And I still do believe in the kind of ethos and the kind of belief um, and everything that they were trying to do, bank the unbanked. Um, but if you're losing money, should you stay loyal to a project that's losing you money? Or should you stay loyal to a project that you think is doing wrong, but because you've supported them for so long, should you stay loyal? That's the question I was kind of asking. So I was thinking about this last night and this morning, and the answer is no. The answer is definitely, for me, it's definitely no. You shouldn't say, well, obviously you can become a supporter, um, but if they're in the kind of, you're losing money from them as well. If you're invested, like I was, I'd lost maybe eighty to $100,000 in BAB because I'd spoke about selling them months and months before because um, I, I was getting those red flags and I wish to God I sold them. But, uh, and I could have sold them for about $100,000. As it turns out, I ended up selling them for about 12000 So I've lost, but it was over $100,000. So I've lost that kind of money. Um, as well because I was staying loyal to a brand or to a company and you shouldn't do that uh, this is involving your money your personal investment loyalty doesn't come into it loyalty definitely does not come into it now I know that makes me sound bad but 
you've no obligation to stay loyal just because you've invested and just because you've spoke about them. Um, and it was the same with me as well. That's $100,000 that could have been in um, kind of my family's. Not to say that I wouldn't have lost $100,000 when the market went down anyway, but um, should you stay loyal? No, you can still support them without putting your money in them. But if a company is just losing money right, left and centre, why would you kind of keep your money invested in it um, as well? Or when you've seen something that just gives you a big red flag, you need, need, need to listen to your intuition here as well. And you develop that intuition over time. If you're in the crypto space for any length of time, you will have already developed some kind of intuition. That's why it's important to do your due diligence and go check out the videos that the CEOs made or check out the company that they've been part of before or the companies that they've built up before. That's why it's important to really check out the team um, as well. But having said that, it's difficult when you go into the likes of kind of titanium. It's only after the fact that you realise there's no substance. Uh, with Adam Todd, it, it looked like confidence and enthusiasm and passion but it's only after the fact that you realize there's no substance but when you first get your first red flag that's when to say right i'm going to step back here and just get out here if you can still support them from a distance doesn't mean you say you support you have to support them with your investment and your own money as well so when it comes to your own money no don't stay loyal you can still stay loyal as a supporter yes absolutely i believe in that and um, but not when it involves your own money when you're your risk unless you're a company that do that unless you're a business that specifically invests in kind of startups that's a different story altogether but when it's personal when it's your money they're not going to be loyal to you if they're going under there's nothing that they're not going to be loyal to all of its one million supporters they can't they can't be so you shouldn't stay loyal to it but you can still support it so i wish that kind of sold kind of all my bab tokens way back when, when I could have got the $100,000 for them, still stayed loyal from a distance. And, and I still, to a degree, I did and do. I really do hope to get their kind of banking license and everything else. So to a degree, there's still that bit of loyalty there. It doesn't kind of um, leave me. But you know, when it's involving your money, no, um, you shouldn't. You should absolutely get out if you've got a red flag. And if you're wrong, then you kind of look at it and learn from the kind of mistakes. I don't know what you think about that. It'd be interesting to hear what you think about that as well. But a lot of us, it's, it's just psychological. We've invested so much time and effort. Me, for example, for XRP, because I've invested a lot of time researching it, looking at it and thinking, this is going to be amazing. I've got confirmational bias now. So the news stories I'm looking at are usually in favour of XRP. So I don't tend to look at stories not in favour of XRP. So I've got this confirmational bias as well. And now I've got the belief that I think XRP are going to do amazing things. It's just the, the price has been held down just now. Is that loyalty? Is that um, faith? The blind faith that's, that's kind of going on here? Of course there is. We have to kind of make a stand sometimes. But I had recognised that in myself as well. So And I've started looking at more and more stories about XRP saying this is not going to work. And this is why it's not going to work. But I'm still of the opinion that it is going to work. So when you do look at two sides of the story, that's that's different. You have to look at two sides, but we tend to look for the side that we are kind of thinking about in the first place. So with XRP, I'm biased towards the positive news stories because I've got that confirmational bias as well. And I don't really want to look at the negative, but I have to force myself to look at it and look at other people's opinions on that as well. So it's not all totally... If something happened with XRP and I got a new story or there was something came out that fundamentally was flawed with XRP, I'd get out in a heartbeat. So I don't say loyal to it with more money, but there is confirmational bias there. And we do that with other coins as well. Uh, the likes of Digitex, there's a lot of supporters there. We've invested so much time and effort supporting a project that we feel we can get out, we feel we're kind of locked uh, in and we can't do an about turn and say I got it wrong. I got it wrong with Digitex. I, to I hold up my hands. Totally got it wrong. I supported it at the beginning as well. Um, so I got it wrong. I got it wrong with Titanium. I got it wrong with Bab. I got it wrong with so many others as well. And this is how we learn. And this is how we develop the intuition. But unless you admit you've made a mistake, then you're not going to develop that intuition required to go forward um, in the crypto space as well. Just a thought. be interesting to hear your thoughts on that as well.
Um, just going to see. Keg uh, Vet has been added to Power Piggy on Butcher. Excellent. Uh, we'll look at them some projects later. And uh, no loyalty means very little in crypto. It, it, exactly. It doesn't, especially when it involves your own money. You can still be loyal without kind of investing money, but um, you have to kind of look look at that. Jeff Cohoon, you lose some money. Does the project no good? Exactly. I dominate today. Uh, oh my God, Steve, that's horrible. It is, but it's my own fault. This is how you learn. It's, it's worth that education. But at the end of the day, I'm still up. I'm still up since I joined in 2017. I'm still up two, three hundred percent. I'm still got skin in the game just now, uh, and I'll trade my way back. And I've been saying that for ages. And I'll accumulate XRP, and I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm okay for two, three years. I'm um, holding it for two, three years. XRP, Cardano, and the smaller ones as well. I still think, still really believe in crypto, and I'll still kind of get some trading money as well once I get more money from the business. Um, G Slick only going projects have had real working products and services. Hopes and dreams don't cut it for me. That's the thing as well. Um, when we're looking at these kind of hidden gems, so we're looking for hidden gems. Obviously, we'll be looking at um, for well, me particularly, I'll be looking for um, a product that's been made already. Like Dent, Dent have a product already. I don't know um, kind of the. I'm just going to look at that. Just a market cap, so it wouldn't be considered a hidden gem. It's 50 million market caps, could still do well, and I think it will do well. But Dent, if that was a, a market cap of under 1 million, and kind of look at that, you'd say, okay, it's got product, it's got partnerships, it's actually a working product, it's not minimal viable product, it's a working product that people are actually using just now. Then you'd go, right, that is a product that's been used as a use case for it as well, and this is what we have to look at, and that's. I've developed that over the last kind of year, two years nearly, coming up for two years I've been in crypto now. So you develop that um, over over time as well if you're in it kind of every day. Um, so that comes, but you have to make all these shitty mistakes beforehand. And it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. And some people have made the shitty mistakes and just got wiped out and they've lost because of it. And I've been, I think I've been lucky in getting out of Titanium, getting out of Bab, getting out of um, Digitex as well. Um, at just the right time. Um, when the red flag, as soon as the red flags happened, I got out. Well, not as soon as Bab was different, because um, the red flags started happening and I didn't get out. Yeah, I trusted. I trusted when I shouldn't have. I should have listened to my own intuition. Um, Aloysius, we need to remove emotion from crypto. We totally do. Works in the banking industry and always advise clients don't be loyal, you don't get rewarded. Go where and you get the best interest rates. Exactly. Exactly. When it's your money, a company is not going to be loyal to you, to you, despite whatever they say, they're not going to be loyal to you. So unless it's your best friend starting up in crypto or something like that, then that's, that's it. even then it's not that definite if it's your own money. Adam Forrest, if you stick to a particular stop loss, then all your losses will be controlled at the same level. Compare this to letting your winners run. Yeah. Um, the only thing I'd say about that is, so for XRP, for me, for example, this is just an example, but XRP, I don't have a stop loss. I do not have a stop loss on XRP because I just believe in them fundamentally for the long term. So I'm just dollar cost averaging. If that's a strategy, that's different. So you don't need to put a stop loss if you've got a DCA strategy. If you've got a trading strategy and you're, you're in it for the short term, that's different altogether. Always, always, always have a stop loss um, for it. And you need to, 5%, I'd say 5% is too little to be honest. I'd say you need about 10% wiggle room, but I always say 5% on when I'm making a premium call or something like that, just to make sure you're only ever going to lose 5%. Um, and that means you can have about 30 trades or something, losing 5%, and you still, you, that mean, if you put $1,000 in, you need about 30 trades to lose um, the whole kind of $1,000 that didn't go, that went against you, and you, you hit all your stop losses. Uh, you might say it's 20 trades, but it's not because 5% will go down incrementally as well. And uh, so it's about 30 trades or something. Um, Benjamin K, yeah, I stayed loyal. Cost me a fair chunk of my portfolio. Still in bad, but should have sold when the flags were appearing. Lesson learned, though. I was top heavy. Exactly. I was top heavy as well. Totally top heavy, so I know where you're coming from. Gary Stewart, Steve, you just defined the difference between trader and investor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Babs is in, Babs H, hello to you. Jeff Cohoon, do you worry XRP needs to have a stable price for banks to adopt? No, um, not necessarily. Not necessarily because it's for remittance. Mainly, it's going to be, there's so many other uses for it as well. But no, I don't think it needs a stable price really, um, 
for the banks to adopt it. Are the banks going to adopt it? I don't know. I don't know. And it is a risk. I see XRP as kind of risky or riskier than the likes of Cardano. I see it riskier than Cardano. But I still think it's just... I just think it's going to explode. I don't know. I, I just think it's going to explode. There, there's loads of reasons for it. Um, Oscar Ray, uh, Digix Futures, Digitex, Scam CEO, end of the road. I think it is the end of the road. A scam. I don't know. I think his ego got in the way too much. I don't think. I think he believed um, what he was talking about. He was a trader before, and that kind of shows with the aggressiveness. That kind of shows that old kind of Wall Street kind of image. Um, I think that the 80s Wall Street image of a trader kind of comes across. Bab Sage, if you don't mind me asking, what kind of work do you do in the real world? <laughs> I teach people how to build up their social media presence. That's one of the ones. I've got personal development products as well. I've got business product. Um, I've written books and not good books, just experimented, just making money online. And I've been doing it since 2012. Um, so it's personal de development. I've got a blog as well, stephenhson.co.uk, which is personal development. That's how I started. Um, I've got a big Facebook page um, of 3.8 million followers. I change your thoughts today. So I built up that and a couple of other pages with about a million followers. So I teach people how to do that um, as well. That was the main part of the business then. I got really interested in crypto. So crypto is another side business for me as well that I do part-time, but I'm spending more and more time in crypto as well. I just love it so much and I love the research and it's never predictable and I love that about it. Um, but I also get stressed about it. Well, don't get stressed because I'm quite laid back, but it does piss me off a little. Um, so yeah, that was that. Um, G Slide, do you think IOTA will be using CV for the car mining rewards um, system with JAG? Haven't a clue about that, to be honest. Uh, do not have a clue about that with the relationship between IOTA and CV. Obviously, between JAG and IOTA is different, and it's only speculation just now. It doesn't mean to say they're going to use it at the moment, Jaguar. Uh, it's not been confirmed that they are definitely going to um, kind of use it, but I think they more or less come out and said that. Um, Gary Permenter, um, XRP will start the imminent altcoin bull run like last time. It's annoying waiting for you to um, waiting for your pick to take off when others are exploding around you. Half the fun, um, as this space is highly addictive, it is highly addictive. You have to kind of watch out for that as well. God the boy, Steve, you know I am XRP hater and think that coins such as XRP has been around since 2014 should be higher than it is due to all the news. Yes, so even XRP haters are saying that uh, and think that coin such as XRP that's been around since should be higher than it is due to all the news. Yeah, it should be. So I don't know if that if you're saying. I'm an XRP hater, and I even I believe it should be higher. Uh, or you're saying, uh, I'm an XRP hater, and it should really be high because of all the news, and you're kind of wondering why it's not. So, yeah, I think I think you're saying you can agree the price should be higher. Um, Bob Sage, you and how do? Yes, I am a how do. Uh, that's a good one, in my opinion. The team is very articulate and can answer any technical strategic question you have. Uh, yeah, I've spoken to David uh, uh, Briley a, a couple of times. Uh, via Skype and his team as well. Um, so yeah, I do like how do and I think what they're trying to do is really good as well. So um, no red flags for me and how do uh, at all. I stay loyal to my wallet. Cook like yes. Yes, definitely. Stay positive people feeling this is the last dip. Hopefully, could this be the same for backed? Um, James Oklahoma, any thoughts on QKC? We'll just have a look at some um, Projects just now. Be inspired. I don't know what to think about FNC.CX. <laughs> uh, I've uh, been looking at that for the past four weeks, actually, and I didn't actually um, take the jump. I didn't actually do anything with it, but I've been looking at it. So any questions you have, please ask just now. I'm on for another 10 minutes because I was 10 minutes late. So any questions about um, projects or anything that you're interested in, or just any questions at all, just fire them up just now. So just look at a couple of projects. Just now, Bird is still going up. Uh, bread, no bird. Um, bread is still going up, 6,349. It's up to just now. It did get up to 6,508. So that's a jump of 24% so far. So this might keep going. Bread might keep going. Um, we're just going to look on Binance. That gives us... don't know if you can hear that noise outside. That's kind of work getting done at the back. 
server network. Jeez. I'm glad to go out of that. So I've recommended server network as well a few times and I do apologize for that, but hopefully you had the stop loss on it and you didn't stay in um, server. MCO is still moving up as well. Um, we're up to 95,000. Sorry, 9,500 is that? 9,500. I getting mixed up. I don't know why they have a few decimal places on some. No, 90,000. It's 90,000. Yeah, $4.74. Yeah, 90,000. And sec price. Yeah. I'm better looking at it here. At MCO. Get the proper Satoshi value. MCO. Yeah, 90,500. MCO have been looking good for a long, long time. It's literally with 50,000, so it's um, nearly doubled up since then. BTT is moving, but it's only one or two Satoshi just now. BTT. Oh, Jesus, that's some noise. I don't know if you can hear that noise. Um, Ambrosis is up as well. Let's look at that. I'm just killing time to you and see if there's any questions or any charts you want me to look at. I know there's a, a couple a couple of people had said. Uh, QKC, okay. QKC for James, QKC. Quark chain. Um, it's going back to, it looks as if it wants to go to 310 again. I'm not saying it's going to get down to 310, but that's support. So it could be a double bottom for QKC. It doesn't look good on the daily for QKC. Four hourly, it doesn't look good, James. Um, on a one hourly, it doesn't look good either. Can I cross down over on a one hourly at 829? On a four hourly, cross down over at 986, that is an indication. So, this is why I, I probably wouldn't get into a project. Well, that's not true. I was going to say I probably wouldn't get into a project unless the 70 EMA had crossed over the 50 EMA on one of the time scales, um, at least the one hour. But with nothing there on the one hour, usually I would do it on the, the daily or the four hour, but there's nothing there on the four hour for QKC. Now the exception to the rule is when you're dollar cost averaging. Um, when you're dollar cost averaging and you really believe in a project for the long term, long term being two year, one year, two years, um, that is long term for me, not um, a month or two months or something. That's short term. The XRP is a um, prime example for that. And having talked about XRP, we'll just look at it just now. So this is on a four hourly. It actually looks not that bad on a four hourly. We've got a, a kind of an ascending triangle or a symmetrical triangle there. If we kind of look at that, um, trend line. Go from here. Yeah, I've got another symmetrical there. For XRP. So it should break out of that, hopefully. And this is not an exact science, but hopefully we break out of that and we go up to. 6,000 again. Short term we're talking about here. So that's for XRP on the hourly. I would imagine that's crossed over on the hourly. It's just crossing over just now. And we've got a red candle on the hourly as well. We've crossed over before, so we need to wait on XRP, see what happens. But with XRP, it's um, accumulation um, for me, so it doesn't really matter. Even if it goes down to 3,000, I, I just kind of honestly, genuinely be rubbing my hands and going, brilliant, I can get more. Um, so instead of buying a couple of thousand for 500 pounds or something, I can buy double that 
provide unless the Bitcoin price is double. Kig, um, two dollars. Thank you very much for the donation. You don't have to kind of donate if you want me to look at the charts, but thank you very much for that. Can you look at VET? I know you'd ask me that as well. VET. So we'll look at VT, um, BTC, V chain. Uh, now a lot of them are going to be down as well. Now on the hourly, we're just crossing over, which is a good sign. But um, well, I was going to say you're in and out on the hourly. You are kind of in and out, but not with VET has been kind of on a downward slope. So it's just starting to cross back over at 114. So it could be a good time to get in. We'll look at the four hourly. It doesn't look good. It's just kind of moving up. We've got three red candles on the four hourly. And daily, I wouldn't imagine um, it's good. No, it's not good at all on the daily. But we're close to that bottom again. So the bottom being about 104. Can I hit that twice and bounce up? So we've been down to 109. But there. So this could be a good time. To look at V chain again. I think I said that the other day as well. It could be a good time to look at V chain because we kind of nearly hit that bomb and bounce back up again. But it's on any of the charts apart from the hourly, the hourly is just crossing over, so you could take that as an indication that things are starting to move again. But I'd wait on that indicator, I'd wait maybe another couple of hours unless it jumps up to 115, 116, and then I would get in then. So I'd wait for confirmation instead of chasing the trade. And depends if you're looking for the longer term, then don't look at the hourly chart, look at the kind of daily chart and wait for it crossing over in the daily or the four hourly, possibly if you want to try and get in earlier. But if you're trading it, um, look at the hour chart and wait for the confirmation to cross over. So may maybe wait another couple of hours and see if it crosses over. I hope that helps, Kig. Um, Uh, thoughts uh, on hot we kind of uh, hot's been mentioned a couple of times so hot I do like the look of and um, we'll go to Bitcoin we'll look at it on the daily so we're at 23 just now now I want to take a look at the order books for hot and we'll go to hot so we're at 23 just now though we're at a critical juncture for hot if if hot or whole chain dips below the 23 then it doesn't look good uh, if we look at this the chart and we can't always tell with the charts but if we look at the chart we've got long-term support here at 23 we've got support here in april uh, at kind of 23 and we can extend that across there's nothing really there to say as well Let's extend that across to there. So previous resistance was at 23 as well. This was back in September 2018. Previous resistance there came all the way back down. It went down to 11. Um, but we've now got that resistance as support. If it breaks that support, then it's not looking good for hot. At the moment, we're kind of 50-50. We're 23-24 Satoshi. If it goes to 22-23, then I suspect it might go down uh, further than 22. However, if it can hold this 23 line, 23 Satoshi line, then it looks like we're going to go up from there. And this is what I was talking about earlier on. We could go up to 50 and double, potentially double from here. So if we move this line and we'll move it to today, if it did break out, we're going to just kind of look at that auto. 51-ish, so it would still be a breakout of 100%. But it's critical that this kind of line has to hold this 23 line. So I'll keep an eye on that. It's winning just now. We've got 390 million to buy, you know, 23 Satoshi, and to sell 24 Satoshi of 343 million tokens. So it's kind of 50-50 just now. So we need to wait and see kind of what happens with that. But it is one of my kind of picks of the day or calls of the day as well. Um, done QKC, F and I've gone to XRP, three to six cents and at times it's impossible to predict and when it goes, it goes, yeah, exactly. Dag. Constellation. 
haven't ever seen that before. So this would be possibly a hidden gem. Obviously, we don't know if it's a hidden gem or not. Not looked into it. Constellation, DAG markets it's on. KuCoin, like KuCoin for finding hidden gems. Hope it. Hey, Balaxi, KuCoin, social. April the 18th. Not tweeted in 12 days. Or is that at the top? Yeah, they're not tweeted in 12 days. April the 16th, April the 8th, April the 5th, March the 27th. That's without kind of just seeing what they do. March. They're not very big on social media. You need to be big on social media. I don't understand why projects are not. It's probably because I teach it and I'm biased. Biased towards it. Tools. Yeah, I'm not looking at that. So is that the DAG you're talking about? Never looked into it, so I don't I can't tell you obviously too much. Um Funcoin? Do you mean Pundi? You don't mean Pundi no. I think you mean Pundi. Have I missed something altogether? Uh, James, I don't know what you what that is, mate. Chain of action going on there, oh, well, yeah. Sound like two stroke. Um, Gino Dial has to even trading JP Morgan stocks. Good one to get into up to 20% in climbing. The stocks. Is that because we're getting into crypto? Um, thanks for the content. Have a good day, Keg. Thank you very much, Keg. Really appreciate your donations, mate. And I think that's it for now. I think that's us all done for now. We've got 58 people watching. If you could go down to the likes button, hit that like button, that would be fantastic. Uh, thank you very much if you can do that. I don't think there's any more questions. Have I missed any? We'll just go back to Crypto Bubbles. That's for the daily. We'll look in the hourly. Looks much better on the hourly one. Ravencoin has gone up. Factum is doing well. Well, 1.18% is up in the last hour. Link, Pundi X, Loom. That's the thing as well. What's happening in the markets just now? Uh, this is a, a chance, if, it, if Bitcoin does go down again, uh, this is a chance to kind of accumulate or pick up some bargains as well. 5,149. This is on daily. We've got three dead candles on the daily. But if you look at the body of the candles, very, very thin. So... Hmm. To me, it's an indication for if we've got candles like this, see the thin bodies, and you get the kind of the, the wicks on either side. <clears throat> Obviously, it's went down much lower and then kind of bounced back up, and it's done that in three days in a row. So, to me, that indicates um, we're going to get a ton around and it's going to go back up. You just never can't, you honestly can't tell with Bitcoin, but to me, that indicates we're going to get a ton around and it's going to go back up. And hopefully hit the 5,600 again. It's turning green just now. So that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. I think Bitcoin is going to go back up again. I need to wait and see. Uh, Mitch died to that noise is Adam Todd trying to get through your door. <laughs> yeah, James Oklahoma Funcoin is a spin off in crypto from the US market um, as fun. Ah, right. I, I was wondering, I was totally. Getting it wrong there, I do apologise. Uh, Crypto Don Juan, thanks Stephen, thanks to you mate. Um, really appreciate um, your support as well. And I know you're going to be one of the ones that's pissed off DJ um, about what I was saying about Digitex. Um, well, I don't know, I don't know, maybe you're not going to be pissed off. Um, Gina Dow, I'm into all things. Uh, Lawrence Matthews, good morning to you, Gina Dow, diversi diversi diversifying all trades, including crypto, excellent. And just like Namaste. To you as well. Okay, I'll leave it there just now. I've gone over a wee bit of my time. Uh, I'll leave it there just now. But whatever you're doing, have a brilliant day. Just be careful out there as well. Develop that intuition that you need for the crypto markets as well and for the people that are in them with the kind of bad actors and stuff like that. Um, uh, but until next time, namaste. Take care. Bye now. Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes. 
the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them, because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them, because they change things. They push the human race forward.